Evidence suggests that pterosaurs were not only capable of powered flight, but that they may have been even better at it than modern day flying vertebrates. It is highly unlikely that pterosaurs were only capable of gliding, as some scientists still believe. The flight surface of pterosaurs is nothing like that of a glider, whose wings typically consist of flaps of skin containing an unorganized array of elastic muscle fibers. Much like that of birds and bats, pterosaur wings have much more structure to them. Much of the rigidity of the wings is attributed to the elongated fourth finger, which stretches from the base of the hand to the tip of the wing. Within the wing membrane are highly organized actinofibrillae fibers. These strong elastic muscle fibers run parallel to the fourth digit across the entire surface of the wing with little space between them, making the wing rigid during flight and keeping it flexible when not in use. Feather tracks and similar elastic fibers, which serve the same function in birds and bats respectively, are organized in a very similar manner to these actinofibrillae fibers. Gliders also typically lack the muscle structure needed to supply downward thrust. Such muscles in modern day birds are largely connected to the animal's sternum. By having a keeled sternum, they maximize the amount of attachment sites for the flight muscles. Pterosaurs did in fact have deeply keeled sternums, so it's logical to assume that they had the muscle strength for powered flight. Another feature that would have helped pterosaurs off the ground was a skeleton composed of pneumatic bones, which are hollow bones with lots of air sacs. Pneumatic bones are significantly lighter than solid bones, lessening the energy costs associated with powered flight. Hollow bones also make the skeleton more rigid, helping to maintain balance during flight. The pteroid bone is an anatomical feature unique to pterosaurs. This long, slender bone at the base of the wrist supported a piece of membrane that extended in front of the humerus, stretching between the neck and the wrist. By changing the position of this bone, this portion of the membrane acted like flaps on an airplane. Wind tunnel testing has shown that positioning the bone downward creates drag, while positioning the bone upward produces enough lift to assist even the largest pterosaurs off the ground. Merely facing a moderate breeze with wings extended and the pteroid bone pointing upward would have been enough to help these massive animals take off. As pterosaurs evolved, their bodies became more and better adapted for a flying lifestyle. The pterosaurs of the suborder Ramphorhynchoid, the early pterosaurs of the Triassic period, had flight surfaces that extended from the forelimbs to the hindlimbs, long bony tails, lots of teeth, and small head crests, all qualities that would have reduced agility while flying. The later pterosaurs of the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous, known as the pterodactyloids, were likely much better flyers than their predecessors. The tails and the teeth were greatly reduced, if not completely absent, head crests used for steering and stability were much larger, and the flight surfaces mostly stopped above the hind limbs. This allowed some pterosaurs to grow dramatically in size. While the Ramphorhynchoids had wingspans of less than 1 meter, the pterodactyloids had wingspans as large as 40 feet. Pterosaurs had an extraordinary sense of balance. Their semicircular canals were twice the size of those in modern day birds. They also had an extremely large flocculus. This is the part of the brain that keeps images steady on the retina by controlling eye movements. The flocculus of a modern day bird makes up a little less than 2% of the total brain mass, more than any creature living today. The flocculus of a pterosaur, on the other hand, made up 7.5% of the total brain mass, possibly more than any animal that has ever lived. By comparing the relative sizes of the flocculus and semicircular canals between different species of birds and bats, it is clear that the size of those structures is highly correlated with flight complexity. All of this together suggests that pterosaurs were not only capable of powered flight, but that some members of this order were the most efficient and agile flying vertebrates to have ever lived, 